Katie. Today, my dad, Glenn, is going to show you how to make homemade pretzels. They are phenomenal. Pretzels are actually one of my favorite treats, and dad knew that, so he decided to perfect his recipe, and we are ready to show that to you today. Dad has really been on a baking journey recently, perfecting his bagel recipe and now pretzels, and I can't wait to share it with you, so let's get started. I have one and a third cups of warm water. And I put this in the microwave for one minute and I know that it's gonna be less than 115 degrees. The water needs to be between 90 and 115 degrees. If it's hotter than that, it could kill the yeast. So I'm gonna pour this in my mixer bowl. And then I have five teaspoons of granulated sugar. So I'm gonna put that in here. The yeast will eat that. And then I'll put in the yeast. And this is instant yeast. I'm gonna put it in here. And I get a yeast in a pound container and I put it in the freezer. And it can freeze up to, they say two years. I think it can freeze longer than that. So I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. While the yeast is proofing, go ahead and measure out three and a half cups of bread flour, one tablespoon of any kind of oil. This is canola oil. one and a half teaspoons of salt, and find two kitchen towels that are clean and dampen them lightly. It's been 10 minutes, so let's look at the yeast. See the solution? You can see the bubbles. That's what you're looking at. Some nice bubbles on the top. Now I'm gonna add the oil. the salt, and the three and a half cups of bread flour. You put it on a low speed until everything mixes in, and then when it's about like this, you'll speed it up. You'll let it be at this speed for eight minutes. The difference between a bagel and a pretzel is a bagel you boil in water. A pretzel you boil in water with baking soda in it. It gives it the kind of soapy taste, also gets it the dark brown color. So let's look at this. The proportions are one quart of or four cups of water and one fourth cup of baking soda. You need to keep those proportions correct. And finally, I've got time to beat an egg and I put one egg, beat the whole egg and put one tablespoon of water. If you want egg whites, you use the egg whites from two eggs and one tablespoon of water. And I'm gonna set this aside and we'll use it later. One thing you need to do is have two pans because you'll be making 12 pretzels. And you'll be putting six pretzels on each pan. And you need to have a silicon baking mat to go on it. Or you can have parchment paper or you can oil it. After five minutes, check your dough. I'm going to have to add some more flour. Let's look at it. When I raise it up, you can see it's sticky and you've got some flour on the bottom. So I will get, I'm going to get a, a, a you don't want to put too much, but I'll put a teaspoon of flour there and then I'm going to put some on the dough here. And I'm gonna let it go some more. I may have to put some more, but I only put one teaspoon at a time with the dough. Okay. 
it's been eight minutes and I've had to add five teaspoons of flour. Uh, sometimes it works out perfectly and sometimes you have to, to add flour to it. It's kind of a damp day today so that may be a reason I had to add more. So I'm ready to take it out. So I'm going to lift it up and I can feel it. It feels good. Take it. You want it, and I've got this on a mat, and you want it so that when you lift it up, it doesn't stick. So when I'm working with it here and lift it up, it's not sticking. If it does stick, you'll just put a little bit more flour, one teaspoon at a time. So again, you can see it's not sticking. So you want to press this into about five to six inches by one foot or 12 inches. So I'm going to spend the time just, have to just flatten it out. And with my hands, I'm feeling that it is about the same thickness all the way through. So I'll be working with this for a while. Okay, I patted it out. It's pretty flat. And it is about six inches wide and over a foot long, which is good. You'll be bringing it in and use the straight edge and you push it in till it's all about the same size and then you push it down and play around with it because you want this whole amount of dough to be the same thickness and I can just feel how it is. So here we go. Again, I'm trying to square up the, the edges here so it's all squared up. It doesn't have to be exact, so it's about ready. So let me measure it one last time. I'm going to measure it, and it's 12 inches long, and it's 5 inches wide. So this is perfect. Now I'm going to cut this in 12 strips. To do that, I begin by getting to the 6 inch mark here, and I cut it right through here. Now I can eye the rest of it, but if you want to, you can go ahead and get, put the six inches and go to the three inch mark. But I basically can eye it, so I can eye the center here. Then I'll cut each one of these into three pieces. So I'll go right here, one, two, three. And again, I'm eyeing this. These are in about one inch strips. I like the pizza cutter because it's so easy. That's the reason I've got a mat. I don't want to mess up my counter. Now I'm going to place these in a pan. A pan here. And then we'll take each piece right here. Now these edges, you kind of have to kind of stretch those out just a little bit. You will be put six in a row here. Weigh them like that. Now we're ready for the first rise. And to do that, I'm gonna get a nice warm area. My house is cold, it's winter time. So I'm gonna turn my oven to bake for 350 and that will be on for about one minute. And during that time, I'm going to microwave a uh, slightly dampened towel for 30 seconds. And that's going to make it real warm to get things started. I'm going to turn on the light of the oven. So again, get, get the warmth with the 350 degrees for one minute. And of course, don't forget to turn it off. You can really mess things up. And then uh, you just let it sit for 15 minutes. I'm going to take the towel out of the microwave. And before I forget, I'm going to put this Clear the 350 degrees. We don't want it, but just a little bit of warmth in there. Now I'm going to turn the oven light on. Now I'm going to put this towel on top, and it's a warm towel. And we'll put it in the center rack for 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. Let's look at the dough. 
as you can see the dough's risen uh, about double the size it was when we put it in there and now it's time to form the pretzel shapes okay I'm gonna get a piece of dough here I'm gonna kind of stretch it out I like to begin by letting it hang a little bit I'm gonna place it on the counter and I'll keep on stretching it out and we're getting all the bubbles out while we're doing this and I roll it till it's about 22 to 24 inches and notice it's the same throughout if you find an area that's a little bit thinner you stay away from it because you want it all to be about the same let me measure it there's 12 inches there and 12 inches so that's perfect and now I'm gonna place this like this about five or six inches wide a horseshoe and I'm gonna measure just so I know this is three inches so I'm gonna cross it at the three inch mark I'm gonna cross it again then I'll bring it up here and press it in and then I'm gonna put it on the tray here and I can adjust it to make it perfect the way I want it to be I've made the first six pretzels and now it's time to put these over and make the next six this is the six I work with first because they started rising first I'm ready to put the pretzels in the oven for the second rise. Now I'm going to take two towels, I'll put them in the microwave for 30 seconds. And in the meantime, I'm going to turn the oven on to 350 just to get a little bit of heat in there. And then I'm going to put the pans in the oven. Now on the top rack, I'm going to be placing the ones that I made first because they've already started getting a little bit larger than these that I just made. And then I work with these first and then these second. So they all have the same amount of time that they rise. The towels are ready. Before I put the towel on here, I'm going to turn this down. In fact, I'm going to clear and take it off. The light is on, the oven light's on. And now I'm going to place this first, the pretzels I made on the top rack. And then I'm going to take this tile and put on here. I'm going to put these on the second rack. And these will rise for 15 minutes. During the second rise, you need to start the water boiling. It's been 15 minutes. And this is the first ones that I made. So I'm going to put those here. And the second ones are going to go right here. So they'll rise a little bit more. And before we move on, I'm going to turn the oven on, bake to 500 degrees. Very important so you have time for it to preheat. The next step is to boil the pretzels. So I've got the water boiling here. And I've got a utensil to take them out. This is a spider, but if you don't have one of these, you can use a spatula. I've got just anything to scoop it back out of the water. You don't have to have one of these. So let's look at them and see what they look like. You see they've risen. They're puffy. Now this is important. You want to turn the water off at this point. So I'm going to turn the power off. And then for the next six, we're going to place the pretzels in here. Let them float. I do one at a time. And for about 30 seconds, so not much more than 30 seconds, but I'm going to throw baking soda solution on top. And then I'm ready to take this back out and place it. Now we're going to set these aside and turn the water up to boiling again. And then we'll do the second set of six pretzels. Okay, I'm gonna put egg wash 
all over the pretzel. And I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese on this one. I like to do it in a little plate so I don't mess up the baking sheet too much. I'm going to transfer this back over here. This is a blend of white and black sesame seeds uh, with some flank salt uh, and some people call it tuxedo blend because it's got the black and it's got the white sesame seeds. And now for my daughter, I'm going to be putting the wash and I'm going to put some some coarse salt. Coarse salt comes in all coarseness, I found out. I like this one because it is not too big and they're kind of uniform in shape. One thing you need to be cautious about is the amount of salt you put on there. You don't want to put too much. I'm gonna put it in the oven for 12 minutes. I'm going to turn the oven from 500 degrees to 450 degrees. I just did the oven at 500 so that the temperature would not go below 450 when I'm baking them. This next tray, I'm going to have some of them that just have the egg wash on them because when they come out, I'm going to put some butter and cinnamon sugar on them. These pretzels are fresh out of the oven and I'm going to put them on the cooling rack. These are the first six pretzels. You have the Parmesan cheese pretzel. You've got the tuxedo, the everything bagel, and then the ones with the salt. While the last batch of pretzels are cooking, I'm getting things ready because some of those are going to be sugary. My grandkids, they love cinnamon sugar pretzels. Let's look at what I found in my cupboard. Down here, I have all different kinds of sugars. All these are good. On pretzels, I put some melted butter and then I go crazy putting sugar on. It's not like the salt. You don't just put a little bit of sugar. You put as much sugar as you can on it. And I'm going to show you what I come up with as far as if I make cinnamon sugar for my family. I start with large grain raw cane sugar. You can kind of see the grains here. I get a half a cup of this and then I mix it with, with one tablespoon ground cinnamon. And this is what I come up with. This is a second six. I have two Parmesan cheese and I've got four plain that I'll be putting the sugar on. I melted a half a stick of butter. This is plenty of butter. And I'm gonna put it on the top. And then I'm going to put a lot of the cinnamon sugar I made. I just kind of go kind of crazy with it. You want to put a lot because you want it sweet. Okay, we have two Parmesan cheese pretzels. We have the plain pretzel that I'm use for a sandwich for lunch today. And we have three different kinds of sugars on them. That is so good. Mm -hmm. I love the crunchiness of the. Okay, I'll 
brown sugar, sugar granules. Brown sugar, it looks like, and some cinnamon. Oh, and that honey butter is fantastic. Mm. Super good. It's my turn to do a taste test. I got the traditional salted pretzel, which is my absolutely favorite. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. I love the fact that the sea salt is coarse. It's gonna give a great texture, I have no doubt. So let me go ahead and try it. It's got a nice weight to it too. Mmm. That is fabulous. Mm. The salt is perfect. The density of the pretzel is fantastic. You can taste a little bit of saltiness already in the pretzel itself. This is perfect. You can make these at home for your family. Enjoy them any time of day with any meal or as dad said, if they don't have holes in them, you can always turn them into sandwiches or even if they do, you still make sandwiches you can. My husband, he likes to turn these into pretzel pizzas, putting cheese on top and then some pepperoni. So many ways that you can eat and enjoy this. So it's a recipe that's so easy and definitely give it a shot, it's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so thrilled the dad was able to share his homemade pretzel recipe with you. They're absolutely phenomenal. Be sure to try them when you get the opportunity. And if you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe if you haven't. Being sure to check the notification bell, and we will see you guys next time. See ya.